Good morning. I am Blazely Dragon, and I want to talk about the slogan that you continually hear and seeing people support called "Demand a Plan." And I want to talk about the fact that, to a certain degree, I can understand some of the three points that they're standing for, but I think that it is out of ignorance and fear, and it is not directly confronting the problem. It will not solve anything. It will limit a certain amount of things, and I think it is one step among many. And it is completely disturbing to me that everybody is in this freaked out panic mode, and they don't want to stop killing. Okay, maybe they want to stop killing, but they're not going about it. And let me explain why. First and foremost, I have video links below this video. I encourage every one of you to watch. There is one that's called Gun Control, a Victim's Perspective, which is six minutes long. A child's answer to gun control where they actually asked young children what they would do, and that one's only three minutes long. And then there's one that's kind of radical and uh, very fierce sounding. I mean, the guy's like almost like yelling, but it's President Obama to ban guns after school massacre, which is worth watching as well. And then, of course, I've got my hour-long video, which I encourage you to watch the whole thing. I bring up a lot of great points, and I talk about what is considered an assault weapon at the end and everything. It's worth watching. It's worth hearing, even though it's an hour long. Uh, this particular video here, though, is I want to talk about this demand plan and what is it. If you go to their website, it has three things that they want to go for require a criminal background check for every gun sold in America. That is excellent. That is smart, and I support that 100%. There is no reason why an individual who wants to buy a firearm should not have a background check. Number two, ban assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. That is stupid. That is ignorant. That is out of fear, out of misunderstanding, and I'm going to explain why that I completely am against and it makes no sense and it will not save lives. The third one is make gun trafficking a federal crime including real penalty penalties for straw purchasers. Now what is a straw purchaser? Well if you decide that if you want to go online and do a quick Google search like I'm doing right now uh, straw purchasers yeah, is a straw purchaser or nominee purchase is any purchase wherein an agent acquires a good or service for someone who is unable or unwilling to purchase the good or service for themselves. Essentially, you buying a firearm for someone else to use, such as the situation that happened with Columbine. That is a very good idea, and I support that idea. I, I, I think two of their three points are very smart and very intelligent. I think one of them is out of ignorance and fear and is completely ridiculous. And let's talk about why, and let me talk about why I think demand a plan in general is ignorant of the situation. It's not going to fix these crimes. It's not. It's not going to make them go away. The fact of the matter is, if every individual owned a gun, it is not going to skyrocket killings. Out of the 300 million Americans we have, the average American does not want to kill another living being. I own firearms. I've owned firearms. I'm not going to go shooting people. I never will. If someone is threatening my life, I will protect my life and my family. That is the only time any of my firearms will ever go off against another human. And most firearm owners are like that. Most humans, most people are good people. That's why you have these people standing up and they want this violence to stop. People want people to have the chance to live and live happy. Taking away guns is not fixing what is causing it. You are changing the media. You are now going to encourage people to do stuff like the Oklahoma City bombing. You're going to cause people to cause explosions with things that people have. You are going to cause people to find other methods to kill. If you want to stop the killings, you want to stop the violence, you need to look at the root cause of what is causing an individual to snap like that. What is it in our society that makes people so miserable that they think it's okay to take a human life? This tragedy that happened in Newtown, Connecticut, the individual killed his own mother, stole her firearms, and slaughtered children. Why? What causes a person to do that? I, I can't, 
imagine a gun owner. He wasn't even a gun owner. He stole the guns. Our system worked. They kept the guns out of his hand when he tried to get them, so he killed his mother. I mean, think about that. How is banning guns going to stop an individual who wants to harm his own mother? If that individual did not have firearms and his mother did not have firearms, what else would he have done? If he wanted to kill and murder his mother and children, what other methods could he have used? What could have been worse? If he would have exploded a bomb like the Oklahoma City bomber did, how many more children would be dead today? You want to stop the violence? Let's look at mental health. Let's look at the way our society works. As a society, as a people, we need to stand up together and stop violence. We need to find out what makes an individual snap. We need to look at what pressures in society are making people miserable. What is making them think it is okay to harm other individuals? Is it their, their parenting, their upbringing, the fact that people feel alone, that they feel teased, that they feel ostracized, that they're different so we have to pick on them? That they, you know, what is it that makes them not feel like they fit in society? I, I'm telling you right now, out of the 300 million Americans, <coughs> I, I fully believe I think there's 313 million maybe. I believe that 310 million of those Americans, if they had a firearm, will not go on a shooting spree, will not kill fellow Americans. Maybe, maybe the last 3 million might be iffy and not be trusted or accidents would happen, but I feel people and humans in general on a whole are not out to kill each other. They're not out to harm each other. And people who are living in fear need to look at that and address that problem. That's what we need our government to do. We need support systems. We need counseling. We need mental health and therapy. We need to look about the toxins and poisons that they're putting in our food, the medications for all this. ADHD stuff and, and Tourette's and whatever, just whatever people are finding any excuse they can to stick drugs in us and to use these pharmaceutical medications. We need to look at them at a whole and find out what it is that makes an individual think it is okay to hurt another human being because the average American does not think that way. There are people right now, there are probably hundreds of thousands of assault rifles out there. Assault weapons, I should say. Assault rifle is a full auto weapon. If you look up the definition, and if you look at my last video where I spend almost a half hour at the end explaining to you what it is that was originally banned, and just for reference, the Columbine thing happened during the ban. They used weapons that were under 10 round magazines, and they also did not use a single assault weapon. They used the legal weapons to do that horrific event. And once again, if you ban all weapons, you are now taking away an individual's right to defend themselves and you are encouraging those who are twisted enough to take a life to use other means such as explosives. There are tons of ways that people can kill people and if they are upset and sick and twisted enough to think that it is okay, they will find a way. We need to help those people think it is not okay to let them realize that it is wrong to take another human life. We need to stand up together in that capacity. We need to look at these people that are being harassed, even people who are committing suicide. There, all these rates can go down. If we take away guns, we are not looking at the problem. We are doing a cover fix. It is like if somebody wrecked a car into a building, blew it up, and you banned people from driving, required them to take buses. It does not change the fact that an individual went out of their way to harm other people. That is what needs to be attacked here. That is what needs to be addressed. That is why demand a plan, even though two of their three points are good, valid points, it is not going to solve the problems that we have here in America. You are not going to get rid of these killings. You're going to see more. And if you look at the two videos below, even the children, these little kids realize that guns are not evil. They say guns can be good depending on who hands that they're in. They even ask them about violent video games, and they say, who plays video games? And they say, you know, do you feel these violent video games make you want to do that to other people? All of them instantly said no, and this one cute little adorable boy wearing glasses says, it's just a game. And his little kid voice, it was absolutely adorable, but these kids get it. These children get it. They understand. Then there's the other one, a criminal, uh, a, um, I'm sorry, a, uh, what was it? Gun Control Victim's Perspective. It's an older video originally with the original ban. This individual lost both of her parents because a man, a madman drove a truck into a diner and started opening fire for no reason. 
even if he didn't have guns, what else could he have had in that truck to kill everyone? So this individual, because in Texas or whatever, they weren't able to carry a firearm into a diner in their purse because that's illegal. So she couldn't carry her firearm with her, even though she is a good shot, she is trained, she knows how to use it. She could have taken him out before he wiped out most of that diner. She lost both of her parents because her dad, who was unarmed, said enough is enough, got up, charged the guy, and was killed. And then when she tried to escape with her mother, her mother, who had been married, you know, they, her mother and father had been married for 40-something years, didn't want to leave. So she held her husband dying in her arms. That gunman came back to him, or I'm sorry, to her, and aimed it at her head and pulled the trigger. She lost both of her parents. And if she would have had her firearm with her, she could have prevented it. And she wasn't mad at the gunman. She said that the gunman was mentally ill. It was like being mad at a rabid dog. You can't be mad at the gunman, and she's not mad at the firearms. She's not mad at these guns because the guns didn't come in there and shoot themselves. She was mad at her legislators for not get, for legislating her out of the right to defend herself. Think about that. And as far as legitimate reasons, our Second Amendment didn't say legitimate reasons or hunting or anything. Our Second Amendment says that our right to bear arms will not be infringed upon. If you read the whole Second Amendment, which I even read in my last uh, hour thing, that you will realize that our Second Amendment is the right to bear arms of all types, even military-grade weapons. Because, like I said, if they're used responsibly, they are not a threat. It is the sick mind behind it. And if we don't fix the sick mind, we're just going to find other tools for them to, to cause devastation and tragedy on human life. The other thing I wanted to say is during that video, if you watch towards the end, there talk, she talks about the L.A. riots where a man had an assault weapon and he stood on his rooftop, depend, defended his home and his property with an assault weapon. And she even said there, you tell me that is not a legitimate reason to have an assault weapon. People are so paranoid that people want to kill each other and they don't. The average person does not want to kill you. The average person is not going to want to pull the trigger. Out of the hundreds of thousands of weapons out there, there are collectors out there with literally hundreds of guns locked up, kept safe, that they use responsibly. You are not going to lose your life to a random person. You're going to lose your life to an individual who's twisted enough to think it is okay to harm you. And if you take weapons out of people's hands, now you're not allowing them to defend themselves. Keep that in mind. It's not about demanding a plan. It is about demanding a course of action that makes people feel included, loved, welcomed, and part of society. Too many times people are ostracized because they're not Christian, because they don't do Christmas, because they have tattoos and piercings, because they're different, because they dress differently, because they talk differently, because they have a different nationality or background. People are ostracizing individuals simply because they're different. And, and for some reason, these individuals are trying to snap. So let's address that. Let's look at what makes people not included. And I've repeated that, and I'm going to repeat that a few more times, and this is basically going to be a shorter video than the other one. Watch my hour-long video. Watch these other links below. Let's look at the real problem as a people together. Let's give people support. Let's give them mental health care. Let's have a volunteer hotline people can call into and talk to when they're feeling upset and alone and suicidal. Let's give the people the reason to keep going and living. Not everybody has it well off in this world. And that doesn't mean it's okay to go shoot and kill people or blow them up or any other form of violence, be it stabbing or beating, etc. We are not going to fix the problem with demand a plan. We need a new plan of action and we need to demand health care. We need to demand mental support and stability. So, this is Blazely Dragon. These are my thoughts. Let's be smart people. Let's not attack things out of ignorance and fear that will solve nothing and only cause a big stir and stomp on rights and freedoms that are here in America just because whatever. Let's look at the real issues here.